Hey guys, I'm Claire, and I'll be your host today. And I'm Annie, and I'll be co-hosting. So Claire, what will we be talking about today? I'm sure that you'll have read the novel Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe. Have you read it? Yeah, I did. Which character did you find the most fascinating? The daughter, the one that Okonko was most proud of, Izima. She was, ironically, the only one that truly portrayed the masculinity of the Igbo culture. Actually, I dare say that she was the one that relates most directly to the feminist stance, which currently bystands our lives today. Ah, uh, I did not think of that. Azima was the most manly child of Okonko's children, and despite being a girl in the predominantly patriarchal Igbo culture, it felt as though she had some sort of authority over the other children and influence over her father. Which made Azima's character very interesting in the context of the Igbo culture. So what do you think is Chabwe was trying to critique through this character? Alright, before we discuss the question and continue our in-depth analysis on Azima's character, I have invited two other guests. Jennifer and Emily to add their valuable opinions to the discussion. Let's welcome Emily! Hi, I'm Emily. Thanks for the warm welcome. I hope you like Things Fall Apart by Achebe because we were wondering what you think Achebe was trying to convey through the character Azima. Well, from Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe, the author explores the gender dynamics through Azima's confident masculine temperament that formed an unconventional mutual respect between the father and daughter relationship of Okonkwo and Azima. Azima's unique disposition delineates the contrast between customary expectation of female roles and her own masculine nature in that Achebe illustrates how difficult it is to defy the traditional norms that surround the female roles as Azima ultimately conforms to equal expectations. Oh, wow, that's, wow, that was really fast. By the way, I'm Jennifer. Impressive, Emily, our esteemed guest indeed. Hey, I know a lot about things fall apart, too. Okay, then, then why don't you tell us about the circumstances in which Azima lives in? Well, Igbo culture is largely defined by its division between males and females. Each have their own roles in society, and it's expected of them to follow these customs. For instance, the females are given the responsibility to provide for their family, which includes household chores and even financial duties that are generally considered to be the work of men. However, I find that it is infuriating that females are really only valued as people who give birth in the Igbo culture. Other than that, they have little to no worth by themselves. So this makes Azima an even more dynamic character. In the Igbo culture, the worst of men are called Agbala, which means women. This term is used on men not only to show the lack of value that females hold, but also to show how men are in of a higher value. To climb the Igbo hierarchy, men need to farm man crops, which is Yan, the king of crops, successfully and earned titles. Men are providers of the family, the head of the family, and leaders of society. They're allowed to have multiple wives and are able to be and violently display their power and authority. In fact, all the activities that are celebrated socially, such as wrestling, emphasizes the importance of physical strength and masculinity and courage. This defines masculinity and it becomes clear that Igbo people prioritize masculinity. Being such a man in this culture means that you are confident and powerful, in which Azima's confidence in herself makes her almost masculine, an anomaly in Igbo culture. One of the reasons I believe Azima is a character that symbolizes the gesture of her crossing of gender dynamics is due to her lack of restrictions. The females in Igbo culture are, to some degree, controlled by the men. Since the people believed that men were superior to the woman and thus in control of them, the men were allowed to physically injure the woman if they misbehave or such. One example seen in books is when a Congo beats his second wife, Igwifi. Although he was later punished for his actions, he was only reprimanded due to the fact that he beat her during the peace week, a time of tranquility in the Igbo culture. In other words, he was punished for beating his wife at the time. So women are overruled by the men, yet Azima suffers less restraints than those of her same gender. Azima's ability to grow into a child of braid and precocious brashness can be said to be due to her father's frequent absence with his duties in the village and how her, models, her mother coddles her. In fact, Azima's manliness can be seen when Okonko shouted at her to sit like a woman, Okonko shouted at her. Azima brought her two legs together and stretched them in front of her. She should have been a boy, Okonko said to himself. From this scene, we can see Azima was originally sitting very unladylike in front of her father, the head of the family. And from the context of a society where people abided rigidly to traditional custom and rules, Azima's blatant physical disobedience of not sitting properly and respectfully in front of her father can very well serve her a punishment. However, instead of beating Azima, Okonkwo only berated her for this insolence, which is a clear indication of his fondness of her. At the same time, his reminiscing words of, she should have been a boy, shows that he is also proud of her for being such a masculine character. And the fact that Azima, Azima, and culturally should be submissive and passive depicts an ironic situation 
between the eldest son, Noye, and Enzima, the eldest daughter, which is that the that Noye should be the more masculine person, yet it's not, while Enzima is. This discrepancy between the gender dynamics show that even females can be strong and valued. Former, furthermore, we know Enzima is masculine because Achebe differentiates Enzima by showing how much Okonko likes her, a real feat. Because of Okonko's fixation on masculinity and strength, the fact that Okonko is so fond of Enzima serves to depict how she fits into Okonko's ideal, which is being masculine in equal terms. Even Noye, his firstborn son of his first wife, is not as well liked as Enzima. In addition, Achebe also comments on the rigidity of Igbo norms. Even everyday actions such as sitting are gender coded. Women and men have their specific way of sitting, and if one does not follow, it is overstepping the boundaries which between masculinity and femininity. Azima walks between the border between this with the body of a female for all intents and purposes. However, his, her personality and mannerisms are akin to that of a man's. She gets these traits from being coddled and protected by her mother. Adding on to Jennifer's previous observation, Azima is seen to share almost an equal status with her mother. The typical relationship of a mother and a daughter where the daughter respects the mother as an elder and thus more authoritative figure than a child does not apply to this pair. Instead, she calls her mother by her name as any equal would. As we can see from the quote, Izima did not call her Nai like all other children. She called her by her name, Ikwifi, as her father and other grown-up people did. The relationship between them was not only mother and child, there was something in it like the companionship of equal, which was strengthened by such little conspiracy as eating eggs in the bedroom. And it was, But it was impossible to refuse Izima anything. After her father's rebuke, she developed and ate a keener appetite for eggs, and she enjoyed above all the secrecy in which she ate them. This unique mother-daughter relationship is one of the defining reasons for Enzima being able to defy the conventional woman's role. Her mother excessively dotes on her, fostering her confidence in herself, and places Enzima on a pedestal that is of equal height. This also gives Enzima more freedom than other children. Yes, we can see this through her mother Equifi's act of sharing eggs with Enzima. Eggs are traditionally seen as products of delicacy and importance, food that are reserved for special situations because they are so delicious. Hence, in Igbo culture, children are rarely allowed to eat eggs as supposedly they would entice children to steal. However, because Equifi lost all her previous children, Equifi gives Enzima anything she wants. So Enzima probably took the act of eating eggs as something that was granted. Thus, even when Okonko tried to stop her, Enzima became more rebellious and enjoyed the secrecy. This really shows how independent Izima is. She actively goes against the societal norms, and ironically, it seems as if the expectation of the society has actually caused Izima to become more masculine. Okonko's review further brought Izima's rebellious nature out and also made her do the exact opposite of how women were expected to act. Yet, despite how much Izima tried to break the set gender roles, the pressures of society ultimately forced Izima to conform to the female roles of the Igbo culture. That reminds me of this quote. Izima grew up in her father's exile and became one of the most beautiful girls, Manbata. She was called Crystal of Beauty, as her mother had been called in her youth. The young alien girl who had caused her mother so much heartache had been transformed almost overnight into a healthy, buoyant maiden. She had, it was true, her moments of depression when she was snapped at everybody like an angry dog. These moods descended on her suddenly and for no apparent reason. But they were rare and short-lived. As long as they lasted, she could bear no other person but her father. It ends... Izima's personal rebellion against the equal norms with Izima all grown up and at a suitable age for marriage. Following her previous masculine characteristic, she rebels against social norms and refuses all her suitors. And despite the fact that Okonko is terribly fond of her, he understands that societal tradition must precede any love he holds for her. I think this also hints at how strong cultural tradition is amongst the livelihood of the people. But you must remember that the equal tradition dictates that when a woman is of suitable age, should she be married or else it will make the family seem pathetic and not as well respected. It is because of this that Okonko lets go of his hold on Zima and tells her to marry, saying, There are many good and prosperous people here, but I shall be happy if you marry and you won't feel when we return home. That was all he had said, but Zima had seen clearly all the thought and hidden meaning behind a few words, and she had agreed. Here you see that Zima, while rejecting all other suitors and what we can view as a rebellious phase against the social norm, she also grows up to be obedient to her father's words. To marry someone you may feel a better standing as a way to help her father improve his reputation and status. The fact that Zima decided to listen to her father and be willing to marry off in a political marriage to someone else contrasts with her bold nature as a young child. In other words, Zima, all grown down, has chosen to succumb to the expectation of the equal custom towards women where she is to be married of off as if that's all her value is. Zima is awfully complacent with her father's energy. In some part of her, she must also be giving up her identity in order to become a full-fledged member of society. 
Yes, I think the fact that in the end, Izima still ends up falling the way that expected of a woman in their society shows how very difficult it is to surpass traditional values. Despite her masculine nature, which gained Okonko's fondness, Izima's would not have been able to gain approval from the members of her village due to her gender. She was bound to be, be perceived by others based on her gender role, the woman who is the caretaker of her family. Okonko must have also realized this and made the best out of the situation by asking for her compliments in the political marriage in order to benefit his own status. Izima's future was determined with her gender and she must apply to the equal culture custom of behaving as a proper woman, no matter her own personality traits. That's rather upsetting considering how she gave up her own identity in order to conform to the role of a woman, which is also exemplifies which also exemplifies the inevitability of her conformity. The delay of Izima's conformity to equal traditions was stalled due to her parents' fondness towards her. Okonku favored her masculinity as well as as well, yet eventually acknowledged the role Azima must abide due to her gender. Azima cannot defy the traditions of her culture and must live up to the standards expected from her as she is female. That's very well said, Claire, and I think that will be all the time we have today. Thank you so much for the discussion today, Emily and Jennifer. Bye! Bye.